Welcome to this next video in the playlist on vector spaces. In this video, what we're going to introduce is the concept of a linear transformation, which is analogous to the concept of a homomorphism in group theory. Indeed, linear transformations between two vector spaces can also be called homomorphisms between the two vector spaces. Okay, so, um, what, the way we're going to approach this is we're firstly going to have a look at a special case of a linear transformation, which is a isomorphism between two vector spaces. So I firstly want to show you what is an isomorphism between two vector spaces, and then we'll generalize it to the concept of a homomorphism between two vector spaces, which is, which is exactly what is meant by a linear transformation. It's called that for historic reasons. Okay, so, an isomorphism between two vector spaces then. So, an isomorphism is going to be very similar to what it was in group theory. In group theory, an isomorphism was a map between two vector spaces, sorry, not between two vector spaces, between two groups, um, which turned the composition law on one group into the composition law on the other group. And that mapping also had to be bijective, so it was a relabeling map that could turn one group into the other. And that's exactly what it's going to be in the case of vector spaces as well. Okay, so, um, let's get something down on paper then. So, the isomorphism which we'll denote phi initially, okay, so this is the isomorphism, is going to be a mapping between one vector space, capital V, and another vector space, capital W, and the thing that these two vector spaces must have in common is that they're both over some field, capital F. Okay, so they have to be vector spaces over the same field. This concept doesn't work if V is a vector space over the real numbers and uh, W is a vector space over um, the complex numbers. They have to be over the same uh, field. Okay, so they're over the same field, capital F. Now, uh, this then has to also have the properties that it uh, is a bijective map and it's going to preserve the addition and scalar multiplication rules. Okay, and to go further with this, let me draw a picture. So I'm going to draw a picture of my two vector spaces here. Okay, so this box then, this is going to denote my vector space, capital V. And then this box over here, this is going to denote my vector space capital W here. So let's put a bit of colour onto this. So we'll have the vector space capital V denoted in green here. Okay. And then we'll have the vector space capital W denoted in red here. Okay. So the isomorphism, the phi, is this mapping that is going to take all the elements of my vector space capital V here and map them onto elements in capital W. So phi is a mapping from here to here, and the first thing that phi must be is a bijective map. Okay, so I'll put that here. So it must be bijective, so it must be one to one and onto. So every element in the codomain here must have one and only one element in the domain being mapped onto it. Okay, so it's got a two-sided inverse. Okay, now what that really means is that this is a relabeling map. This is relabeling up all the entries in this uh, vector space capital V with entries in this vector space capital W. And if you like, you can think of this as being the map that is just changing the symbols of this vector space capital V and replacing them with symbols from the vector space capital W. Okay, now, the mapping phi has to have more properties than just being a bijective map, however, to classify as a uh, isomorphism. Okay, and these two properties that I'm now going to tell you about, these are the really important ones. Okay, so, it has to play very nicely with the addition and scalar multiplication rules. So, our vector space capital V then, it will have two composition laws on it. Addition and scalar multiplication. So let me colour these in. So here is addition, the first one here. Okay, and remember this is a composition law involving elements of the vector space being composed with elements of the vector space. So we'll have all of the elements of the vector space given a row in this great big table, 
and we'll have all of the elements of the vector space given a column in this great big composition table, and then um, all of the entries in this addition composition table will then define what any two vectors in the vector space added together uh, is actually equal to, and all of the answers will be back within the vector space capital V. Okay, we'll also have our scalar multiplication law here, and I'll keep this in green as well. And this will involve all of the elements of the field, capital F, being scalar multiplied. Um, sorry, all of the elements of the field, capital F, scalar multiplying elements of the vector space, capital V. So we'll give all of the elements of the field here a row that is dedicated just to them. And all of the elements of the vector space will have a column that is dedicated just to them. So we'll put all of the elements of the vector space along here, and then the entries in our scalar multiplication table here will define what any element of the field, scalar multiplying uh, any element of the vector space is equal to, and all of the answers here will be back within the vector space, capital V. Okay, so uh, there will be equivalent things then on our vector space, capital W, so I'll put the addition one here, and the scalar multiplication here as well. So okay, and I'll just quickly colour those in, in red. So, to be an isomorphism then, this bijective map, which is relabeling up all of the symbols in V with symbols in W, when we apply it to the addition and scalar multiplication tables on V, okay, so what do I mean by that? I mean we have all of the elements of the vector space in the titles of the columns and the titles of the rows go through and relabel them up with the symbol that they are replaced with in W by this mapping phi. So go through and replace them all with the new symbol that's replacing them from the vector space capital W, and then actually also go through all the entries in the addition composition table here, which are all elements of the vector space, and relabel them up according to this mapping phi as well. And basically, it has to be true that the addition law, when you relabel it up with this relabeling map, has to become the addition law of uh, the vector space capital W. Okay, now, let's just actually try and get that in equation form, because there's a beautiful, simple equation that can describe the fact that when we relabel up the addition law on the vector space capital V, the domain vector space, it becomes the uh, addition law on the codomain vector space. Okay, and the way that we can ar arrive at this formula is that if we take two arbitrary vectors in my vector space capital V, so let's have little v and little v bar, Okay, we can add little v to little v bar. So little v will have a row dedicated to it in the addition composition table, and little v bar will have a column dedicated to it. And then the entry here, v plus v bar, which is the entry that's in the intersection of the row of v with the column of v bar, okay, uh, that will be the answer to what v plus v bar is actually equal to. Now, let's think about what it means for when we relabel up this addition composition table, it to become the addition composition table over here. Well, V and V bar are both going to be relabeled up by our mapping phi. Okay, so V is going to be sent to phi of V, okay, and V bar is going to be sent to phi of V bar. So we would relabel up these as phi of V and phi of V bar. Okay, and phi of V and phi of V bar would be over in our addition composition table here in uh, the vector space capital W. Okay, now if we want it to be the case that this one, when it's relabeled up, becomes this one, then we need to make sure that when we relabel up this entry here, when we relabel up v plus v bar, i.e. when we take phi of v plus v bar, we need to make sure that it's the same as the answer over here. Okay, and the answer over here will be phi of v plus phi of v bar, where this addition is done in the addition composition table on w. Okay, so that's addition in w, and this is addition in v. Okay, so understand what I'm saying there. I'm saying if we take two arbitrary elements of our vector space capital V and add them together in our addition composition law on capital V, it's v plus v bar, now, we're relabeling up this, and we want it to become this. V will go to phi of V, V bar will become phi of V bar. So if we want this one to become this one, then we better hope that phi of this entry here 
is equal to uh, the answer to 5v plus 5v bar over here. That's what it means to say that we want this one to relabel up and become this one. So we want it to be the case that 5v plus v bar is equal to 5v plus phi of v bar. Okay, and understand the difference between those two. This is addition in the addition law on w, and this is addition in the addition law on v. Okay, and that's how we can sum up uh, this criterion that we want phi to relay what the addition law on our vector space capital V and turn it into the addition law on our vector space capital W. And of course we just have to add one more line. We need to say this needs to be true for all little v and little v bar that you can possibly dream up in capital V. And when we insist that that's true, that means that this needs to hold true for absolutely every possible entry in this addition composition table because, as I say, you can vary v and v bar over all the entries of the at vector space capital V, and therefore you can come across every single entry in here. Okay, so this line then, this is the nice, um, simple way that we can describe this idea that we want the uh, mapping phi to relabel up our addition composition table and turn it into the addition composition table on our codomain vector space. Okay, now with that understanding then, we can very easily now do the same thing for scalar multiplication. So we want scalar multiplication also to do the same thing. I want it to be the case that if I relabel up my scalar multiplication law on the vector space capital V, according to this bijective relabeling map phi, that it becomes the scalar multiplication law on my vector space capital W over here. Now what do I mean by that? Well we've got all of the vectors in the vector space capital V given a column that is dedicated just to them, I want you to go through and relabel all of those titles up with their analogous entry in W, so relabel them all up, and then all of the entries in the scalar multiplication table as well, they're also in the vector space capital V, I want you to go through and relabel all of those up with this mapping as well, send them on to what they are uh, in W. Okay, do not change the field. You do not mess around with the field. The field is not changing, so that bit stays the same. Okay, so the field is unchanged. We're just relabeling up the entries of the vector space, okay, to replace them with entries from W. And we want it to be the case that we turn this scalar multiplication law here into the scalar multiplication law over here. Now, again, we can write that in formula form. Okay, so let's derive the formula. So, uh, let's say we have some element of the field, C, and some element of the vector space, little v, then the answer over here is C times v, C scalar multiplied by v. Now, if we then relabel up the scalar multiplication table, C will remain exactly the same, so C won't change at all, but v will go on to phi of v. Okay? Now, c times phi of v has some answer already over in the scalar multiplication table on w, and if we want it to be the case that when we relabel up this one, it becomes this one, we better hope that c times v is mapped onto c times phi of v by the mapping phi, i.e. our criterion here is that phi of c times v is equal to c times phi of v, and that needs to hold true for absolutely all c as an element of the field, and for all v is an element of the vector space capital V. So you choose any c and any v uh, that you like. I want it to be this. Uh, I want this to be true. Okay, and that's just the statement that I want all of the entries in this scalar multiplication table on my vector space capital V when they're relabeled up by our mapping phi to become the scalar multiplication table over here. Okay, so that's the symbolic way that I can capture this idea that I want uh, all of the um, entries in this scalar multiplication table to become the entries in this one when I use this relabeling mapping. Okay, so that then is the idea of a vector space isomorphism. And if there exists an isomorphism between two vector spaces, we say that the two vector spaces are isomorphic. Okay, now what does this mean? Well, this is very deep, okay, because this tells us that actually 
these two vector spaces aren't actually that different at all. Their algebraic structure is identical. The only difference between them is that you've used different symbols. That's the only difference between two vector spaces that are isomorphic. They have different symbols for the vectors, but apart from that, they are not different structures at all, okay? Because the reason for that is that if I relabel up all of the elements of my vector space V with elements of my vector space W, I have turned my vector space V into the vector space W, okay, if this mapping is an isomorphism, because I've assumed that it turns the addition law into the addition law on W, and it turns the scalar multiplication law of V on into the scalar multiplication law on W. Okay, so truly there is absolutely no difference between the algebraic structure of two isomorphic vector spaces. Okay, all that is different between them is that you have used different symbols, and that is not an interesting difference at all. That's a trivial difference. That's a man-made difference. That's, you, you know, two different people have made these vector spaces and used different symbols. That's not a deep difference between them at all. Okay, they have the same fundamental algebraic structure and you won't find any more truth studying one than you will the other. Okay, you'll find the exact same theorems hold true for them because they are the exact same algebraic structure, just different symbols. Okay, so that's then the concept of a vector space isomorphism. We're now going to generalize the concept of a vector space isomorphism to the concept of a vector space homomorphism. And for historical reasons, a vector space homomorphism is not called a vector space homomorphism usually. It's perfectly correct to call this a vector space homomorphism, but usually vector space homomorphisms are called linear transformations. Okay, so we're now going to see then the definition of a linear transformation or a vector space homomorphism. Now, I should stress all the isomorphisms are linear transformations, they are homomorphisms, they're just a special case of a homomorphism. Okay, so I will now go from denoting the mapping by phi to denoting it by t. Again, for historical purposes, this denotes a linear transformation. So a linear transformation or a vector space homomorphism is a mapping from one vector space capital V to another vector space capital W. Okay, and these two vector spaces, the domain and codomain vector spaces, both have to be over the same field. Okay, and it's a special mapping because these two criteria here are going to be true. So T of V plus V bar is going to equal T of V plus T of V bar for all V and V bar are elements of the domain vector space capital V and also t of c times v is going to equal c of t times tv for all c is an element of the field capital F and v is an element of the vector space capital V. Okay, so those are the criteria that would want to be true in order for this mapping t to be considered a linear transformation. And you might now be asking, well, what is the difference between that and an isomorphism? Well, which bit have I missed out? I didn't insist that this was bijective anymore. Okay, so it doesn't have to be bijective. Bijective has gone. Okay, so we do not insist anymore that it's got to be bijective. So I'll cross this out. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a bijective map, it just has to obey at these criteria. Okay, so not being bijective means that it no longer has to be one-to-one -one and it no longer has to be onto. So this mapping might be mapping all of the elements of the vector space capital V onto just a subset of the elements in capital W, i.e. it doesn't need to be onto, it doesn't need to be subjective anymore. In addition, it doesn't need to be injective anymore, so it might be the case that multiple different elements in my domain are being mapped onto the same element in my codomain. Okay, so it's no longer got the beautiful interpretation as just being a relabeling map where we are relabeling the entries of this vector space with an element uh, in this vector space W, okay, because it's no longer one to one and onto. Okay, so when, it's, when it is bijective, so, okay, so a linear transformation that is bijective, of course, then will be an isomorphism, and that will mean that the two vector spaces are isomorphic, having the identical algebraic structure. But if it's not bijective, uh, then 
it no longer means that the two vector spaces have the identical algebraic structure. Okay, so let me try and give you a bit more intuition then for what is meant by a non-bijective uh, linear transformation, so one that is not uh, an isomorphism. Okay, so if we go back to our picture here, what we will still be doing is replacing all of the elements of this vector space, capital V, with elements of the vector space, capital W. So we're still going to be mapping all of these vectors onto vectors over here. It's just not necessarily onto, and it's not necessarily one-to-one -one anymore. Okay, but you can still think about taking the addition and scalar multiplication laws on our domain vector space here, and then having a go at replacing the elements of the vector space with what they're mapped onto in our vector space capital W. Okay, so what you'll then do is you'll go through the addition law and replace all the vectors of the vector space uh, with what they are now, uh, what they've been mapped onto in the co-domain vector space, capital W. And the fact that we are insisting that this is true means that when you finish this, this composition table that you'll end up with, and we'll just stick with addition for now, okay? Um, we'll go on to scalar multiplication in a moment. All of the answers that you've got here will be the same as answers that you've got over here. Okay, and let me stress that it could be a very strange composition table now. Okay, so if I draw the addition table out here, let's say I've got three arbitrary elements of my vector space, capital V here. So we'll have little v, and we'll have little v bar, and little v w bar, uh, sorry, double bar here, okay? Uh, so the answers at the moment are v plus v bar is the answer to what v plus v bar is, and v plus v double bar will just denote v plus v double bar, okay? Now, when we apply one of these non uh, bijective linear transformations, potentially it's not going to be injective anymore. So we have the potential for different elements of the domain vector space to be mapped onto the same element in the co-domain vector space. Okay, so to illustrate this, let's suppose that V bar and V double bar are going to be mapped onto the same element in my co-domain vector space, capital W. Okay, so let's suppose that little v is going to be mapped onto W. And let's suppose that little v bar is mapped onto the w bar, and little v double bar is mapped onto w bar as well. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is how our interpretation of what this is actually doing has to change because of the possibility that this isn't injective anymore. Okay, so here is my addition law here. And I've now said that v is going to be mapped onto this element little w by our linear transformation t. And V bar and V double bar are going to be mapped onto the same element in capital W by the linear transformation. Okay, so then what's going to happen is, as you can see, the composition table now has two columns dedicated to the same element of the vector space capital W. So this is what I mean by uh, the interpretation being slightly strange, okay, because when we relabel up the addition composition rule uh, with our linear transformation T, it might be the case that um, you end up with multiple different rows and columns dedicated to the same element of the vector space. However, Insisting that this law is true is equivalent to saying that all of the additions that you still have defined in here will be equivalent to uh, what the additions are in the codomain vector space, i.e. even though you might have multiple ways of doing w plus w bar in this relabeled up addition table here, both of the answers will be the same, and they'll be the same as the answer to w plus w bar in the codomain uh, vector space. So what I'm trying to say is that when you relabel this up, you may get a very strange looking composition table where you have multiple different columns and multiple different rows dedicated to the same elements of the vector space capital W, but all of the answers all of the different compositions that are in here will be the same as the answer that is over here. Yes, you may have multiple different entries in here denoting the same addition because of the degeneracy in the columns and rows now, but the answers will all be the same and they'll be the same as the answer in this addition table here. That's what this law says. Okay, so although now 
the relabeling of this addition law up is more complicated, it looks a bit weirder, it still does turn this into this basically, or potentially into a subset of this because it might not be subjective anymore. Okay, so that's what that criterion says, that when we relabel up this addition table, all of the compositions will have the same answer as what they have in our codomain addition table. And it's the same for scalar multiplication. Again, we're not necessarily injective anymore, so that means that um, different columns, columns that were distinct in our addition table on V, might end up being dedicated to the same element in the codomain vector space capital W. Okay, so although the scalar multiplication table will look odd, the, because we've insisted on this being true, all of the answers to, uh, let's say, C times little w, okay, where w is an element of capital W, it will um, be the same in here as it would be in here, even if there are multiple different ways, multiple different entries denoting that answer because there are multiple different columns dedicated to little w. All of the answers will be the same, and they'll be the same as the one answer that is in this scalar multiplication table on our codomain uh, space w. Okay, so again, if you relabel up the scalar multiplication table with this non-bijective linear transformation, it may end up looking very odd because you may end up with multiple columns dedicated to the same element of the codomain vector space, but all of the compositions that you have, all of the answers, will be the same as the answer to that scalar multiplication in this scalar multiplication table on W. Okay, and then the non-subjective bit, if this map is non-subjective, then it will just be the case that not all of the elements of the uh, vector space capital W will actually have columns dedicated to them in this relabeled up scalar multiplication table. Okay, so you'll just have a subset of the elements of capital W uh, represented here. Okay, but it will still, all the answers will still be the same as the answers over here. Okay, so I hope with that that I have communicated to you what linear transformations actually are. They are these very special maps uh, that uh, will, when applied to the addition and scalar multiplication tables on the co domain vector space, will turn those addition and scalar multiplication tables into uh, the scalar multiplication and addition tables on the codomain space. Okay, so all the answers in them will be the same as the answers in the uh, codomain space. Okay, right, so we'll have a break there, and in the next video what we'll talk about is um, how if you have a basis for your domain vector space, and you know where the basis vectors are sent by a linear transformation, you know instantly where all the vectors of the uh, domain vector space are sent, and then we'll go on to the concept of the image of a linear transformation and the kernel of a linear transformation.